By now, most of you are probably very well aware of the emphasis on Marxist and communist social justice ideological culture in universities and colleges across the Western world. From the very existence of pointless degree programs like women's studies, designed only to create a new generation of so-called educators to proliferate the very ideas that they themselves were taught in these pointless programs, to mandatory social justice or diversity courses being thrust upon innocent and naive 18-year-olds <laughs> who are taught to respect and trust the word of their professor as unquestionable truth, rather than to constantly question and debate which was of course one of the purposes of courses in the realm of philosophy or the political sciences before this Marxist takeover. The concept of higher education being a place of higher learning and higher thought has been pretty much totally co-opted and replaced with a rule of listen and believe. Actually, no, more specifically, listen and regurgitate. The origins of this caustic rot that has grown like a sickness within the ivory tower leads back to the Nixon era when the left, after the hippies, the free speech, and the free love movements all began to fall and retreated from the streets in protest of free speech, hilariously enough in retrospect, retreated to the academy, where rather than advocating cultural and social Marxism openly, they could do it in private to slowly infect the minds of new generations. Dissatisfied with the new left movement, decidedly more centrist than their preferred left authoritarian ideologies, the old left used the university system to begin disseminating ideas on the evils of colonialism, nationalism, and now even whiteness and masculinity, while adding a growing list of oppressed groups to their topics of supposed research from third world countries to women themselves as a fucking monolithic group, all framed as minorities in need of socialist systems to save them from the systemic oppression of the traditional Western civilization. AKA, you know, all civilization, or at least the only one that you're allowed to talk shit about. As such, the products of this biased university system, which consistently over the last 40 years has replaced more and more courses dedicating more and more resources to these ideological communist and cultural Marxist indoctrination classes and entire fields of supposed study. The students became, as a result, more and more likely to repeat this so-called knowledge throughout their lives, regardless of whether or not they went on to directly teach the same ideology in turn in the once prestigious institution of academe themselves. As high school teachers and even parents, narratives of the vile oppressive nature of Western civilization has been slowly growing until it has become, as it is now, such a pervasive and cancerous form of thought that concepts such as the call for the death of a so-called wrong thinker for the crime of merely influencing thoughts of others in a way that falls outside of the accepted socialist groupthink is being openly advocated by educators. Think I'm bullshitting you? No, I'm not. Take this teacher who was on the street openly suggesting that Alex Jones should be, at best, in her own words, brainwashed into no longer holding his opinions, again, her words, not mine, and at worst, outright murdered for said opinions. Alex Jones needs right. to be killed. Is that yeah, what you're saying? I am. So free speech. What do you got against free speech? Okay, you know what? what do you got against free speech, lady? I want you to listen to it from the other side. Now this is totally different than what you think. Okay? I want Alex Jones to be taken out for brainwashing. Not free speech. I believe in free speech. You know what we were just doing? We were speaking freely. But right just now. say you want to stop someone who has a news program that millions of people listen to, and you want to go ahead and eliminate his brain? You want to get him killed? You want to basically, you want to eliminate free speech? How do you... I know oh. who did this. It was those bullies at Communist Marty's High School. That's who. Oh, come on, Bottles. We don't know who did it. Oh, yes. I have a very good idea. Yes. This woman is an educator, at least as far as I can tell. I mean, as much as I love the man Alex Jones, and I would, please, Alex, if you would like to adopt me as your daughter, I, that'd be great. The absolute fucking madman. We have to be aware that he's not always, you know, the most accurate and unbiased reporter. <laughs> but 
As far as I can tell, this woman does appear to be an educator. And it is this mindset that places us where we are, where even the concept of opposing ideas influencing the opinions and minds of others is such anathema that they must be met with physical violence. I mean, when you have educators proposing this, what kind of message do you think is being passed on to the educated? It's not difficult to see how these messages that were initiated in the academy have been distilled down into subsequent generations resulting in a woman like this, yes? And if you don't already have enough proof of how absolutely fucked academe is, and I'm speaking at least partially from experience as someone in the field, I want to illustrate in this video how absolutely screwed the ivory tower is in current year. Where at Hunter University, for example, you can now in fact take a course on abolishing whiteness. Well, the title of the course may at first take some of you a little bit aback, but in the face of over 40 years of an inundation, no, of a constant production of more and more Marxist ideologically indoctrinated students, it really should come as no shock and no surprise to anyone that this shit is real. When these people have been taught these messages as nothing short of irrefutable fact, how is it any surprise that they pass the same messages on to the next generation to the point where insanity becomes normalcy? Even a cursory look at the very principle of a course like this should reveal how fucking unapologetically racist it is. I mean, can you imagine seeing a course at colleges called Abolishing Blackness? <laughs> Of course not, because as I've said, these commie cucks stuck in their ivory tower are trying to find new ways to identify oppression of every group on the planet outside of straight white males. So of course, it's fine. After generations of compounding Marxist nonsense, anti-science in upon itself, yeah, you get an elective for which political science students at Hunter must take several on abolishing whiteness. Yeah, that's now a dang thing. Although, of course, as it's an elective and as such, no one is forced to take this mess. This is just an example of the extent of indoctrination happening across universities in our country and across the world. You may notice that this course has no real description. That might be in part because it appears that Hunter does not include it on their publicly listed courses. Well, gee, wonder why you wouldn't do that. But let me be fair, that's actually pretty common for electives. Usually if a professor has a topic he or she really wants to teach, they can request to take up one of these elective spots for a special seminar. And as such, often the information is sparse at first. But hey, as I've always said, judging a book by its cover may not yield the most accurate results and understanding of what is beneath the surface, right? Maybe this is just a critical look at the very cultural Marxist, anti-white, anti-male propaganda I've been railing against, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah, not in the nightmare reality we live in, friends. Uh, so while the course has no description online, I did find this flyer posted by a Hunter student. So let's take a look at what is being taught as a political science course. All right, so what do we got? This course offers an overview of whiteness studies in the United States. Uh, okay, so like what, like an introduction to US history? I mean, that's what I would think of when I thought about US whiteness studies, if I had to concede that such a thing is, you know, a thing. A subfield within critical race, uh, theory, fuck off, okay. Do you see that word critical theory? What that means in the social sciences is that everything presented as fact in this course is not going to be based on quantitative statistical data, but rather on moral relativism and something called lived experiences. These people are the mental invalids and award-winning mental gymnasts who call themselves scholars, and they just make my fucking blood boil. Critical scholars believe, generally speaking, that all reality is based on perception, which is why they can get into the whole a rich black man is still more privileged than a homeless white man shtick, because all of these perceptions and lived experience are things that they do not want to quantify and would have no idea how to quantify because they are laissez-faire pseudo-philosophers who lack proper education or any education in any real scholarship to do anything beyond publish bullshit, meaningless article upon meaningless article, all of which are based on what is by their own admission feelings that cannot be quantified and more importantly should not ever be quantified. And maybe that makes me sound a little autistic that I want to assign numbers to everything, but uh, as a scientist I have to. I need numbers, I need data, I need facts. I don't give a shit about your feelings. It was not very obvious. There is a massive schism between my type of quantitative social science and what these self-proclaimed critical cultural scholars believe is science. Many of them genuinely think 
those of us trying to use observation and statistical analysis are setting science back by being overly concerned with numbers rather than feelings. I remember my first time going to a conference. I was taking the train to my hotel and I saw two girls behind me with ID badges from the convention. So I decided to strike up a conversation on the ride, something I would normally never do because autism and all, but hey, shared social identity. When they learned that I was a quantitative empiricist, they literally, I mean, physically stuck up their noses at me. Yes, friends, these people who operate solely in the art of bullshittery, based nothing beyond their own baseless opinions, honestly think I'm the poor scientist. We are the poor scientists for looking at numbers and facts. And that, that right there, is how just beyond fucked the modern university education system is. The ones crunching the numbers were the plebeians, and the ones teaching gay, trans, black, Muslim slam poetry are the ones really getting at the crux of uncovering reality. Forget math and science, friends. This is what's really worth thousands of dollars and years of your time. Fuck you bitches on the train, seriously, fuck off. But on that entire point of time and money, let me make another quick aside to once again complain about the very idea that a university education is required in our society when it's actually the exact opposite that's the case. If you want to start a business, why don't you take the twenty or $40,000 loan that you're going to take out every single year to go to school and start a business. Don't go to a four-year institution, rack up triple-digit debt, and then have a go at it. That's, no, that, that's the exact opposite of what you should do. <laughs> and no shit, there are specific fields for which a college education is required. Let me think. Medicine, law, media shit, sure. But the forcefulness of every single outlet, from peers to high school counselors and teachers, to the very culture itself, from our parents, from our family, that college is a prerequisite to being a successful adult is an absurdity. And part of the point of this video, I think, is to illustrate that. Given that the state of the academy being so warped as to offer courses in the abolition of whiteness, <laughs> yeah, it should be obvious how fucked we are. Look, I'm a fairly highly educated person, and through a nice combination of luck and hard work, I paid very little to go to an undergraduate institution where I got three degrees, and was paid to do pretty much everything above that undergraduate level, but hey, for me, that's because what I really wanted to do was media shit, and there was no other way for me to do media shit without spending a lot of time in school. However, that certainly should not be the required course of action for all people, and the ways I see students pushed more and more into college when it may not be the logical choice of action for them, more frequently when it doesn't even appeal to them, that very concept is repugnant to me. I cannot count the number of times at this point that I have spoken to undergrads who have directly expressed having no desire to be in school, yet are in a hundred level classroom with me because they think they have to be. Here's the thing, no you don't, and it's not just about getting a job or finding a career. You don't need to go to college to become educated even at this point. Information is so readily available in the digital age that within a certain threshold of expertise, so obviously you can't become a doctor with your internet degree, I would say there is very little an individual cannot educate themselves on without the use of a professor in a physical classroom, tests, and grades. And yes, friends, I am essentially arguing that my entire field, my job, is quickly becoming obsolete if it is not obsolete already. And courses like this, this abolition of whiteness, they are emblematic of just how obsolete we are. Tell me when Thunderfoot turns down government funding from his institution. Tell me when he stops teaching classes or whatever the fuck he does, man. I don't see anyone else at Academe saying this shit that needs to be said. So I'll say it. The Academy is dying. It is the cancer of cultural Marxism that has eaten away at its once prestigious name. Some of the smartest people I know have absolutely zero higher education, for fuck's sake. And considering the shit these cult-like ideologues teach as fact, it gives me real reason to suggest, as I am here, that overall, going to college, particularly in the liberal arts, will probably produce more morons barely capable of functioning in the real world than it will doctors or people who contribute positively to science and society. So yes, as someone in the tower, I'm telling you to keep out, Whee! <laughs> keep out for your own damn good, because we don't deal in education anymore. We deal in indoctrination. If you can manage to keep your head above water, I commend the hell out of you. Somehow I managed to and am enough of an irrepentant shitlord at this point that these cultural Marxists are very unlikely to ever get their mitts on my brain, but they certainly tried to, and at some point some of that indoctrination did actually get to me. They were lessons that had to be unlearned, and unlearning information is considerably more difficult than learning it. Again, you don't need a four-year college education to have a successful career. 
Far from it. You don't need a four-year college education to be an intelligent person. You don't need a four-year college education for much else beyond specific job training. And if you can avoid that, I would stare far fucking clear of this quickly sinking ship. Now, where was I? Oh, I was one sentence into this course description and two lengthy asides into the general point I'm trying to make and not the specific example, but all right, let's get back to it. Blah, 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 critical race theory, uh, focusing on concepts of consciousness, invisibility, disavowal, and resentment, drawing on texts from political science, history, literature, sociology, and philosophy. Oh yeah, I'm sure those aren't just baseless bunk. <laughs> Moving on. We will be examining how whiteness and or white supremacy and violence is intertwined with conceptions of gender gender, race, sexuality, class, body ability, nationality, and age. Yeah, so in addition to automatically conflating being white with white supremacy and violence, this course is all about how whites negatively affect all of those other groups. Yeah, not surprised at all. Just thought we should double check to make sure that this trash is exactly what I was expecting. This professor's Rate My Professor page, by the way, has now been brigaded by poll, which I don't usually approve of because all it does is gives them a reason to claim victim status. But I should point out that this woman is an adjunct professor, without a doctoral degree, which means she probably makes a little bit more than minimum wage to teach this shit, meaning she does it out of her warped, twisted little heart to ensure that she can continue to spread this cultural Marxism to another generation to the detriment of her own income. But this is far, far from a limited case, as I'm sure you all know. Here is a project from a course at the University of Michigan, which requires a reading on why miscegenation, that is race mixing, is not only a good thing, but a necessary thing. And for white people, particularly white men, Males, to refrain from romantic relationships with, here's, here's how it's phrased, black identifying women is in this person's own words, not a fucking right. Fuck right off. This is even more egregious than Riley Dennis. Holy hell. Not only is it bigoted to not engage in a romantic relationship with a person of another race if you're white, you lack the very basic human ability, the basic human right to deny said person. This is unfucking believable And knowing that we have professors like Ciccarello calling for a white genocide and supporting the genocide of whites in Haiti, is there really any wonder that this anti-white sentiment is so prominent? Here's the thing, friends. I'm pretty sure I, I'm actually not telling you anything you don't already know. I'm just giving you some spicy new examples to add to your rage fuel. Have a good day. <laughs> And it's not just anti-white propaganda to make sure that we're just choo-choo tugging along with all of our cultural Marxist ideologies. Universities are also inundated with pro-Islam propaganda. This is not new, by the way. When I was an undergrad uh, six, seven years ago now, I was a member actually of the Arabic Culture Society at my Catholic university. But I do remember that Islam was rarely the focus of any events held by this club. Here is what I did in the Arabic Culture Society. We had a hookah night in front of the student union twice a year and a bunch of events where they would come out with food and cuisine from across the Middle East and we would just eat it. I, that was it. That was pretty much what we did. I, we, there was nothing else. I don't remember ever having a fucking hijab booth. I don't remember ever having to ask a question about Islam, get a donut events. No, I don't remember that shit. Now, maybe some of that is the tendency of Muslims, as we see, where they are in the vast minority to be more likely to assimilate to the host culture. Maybe it was just my undergrad institution, maybe it was that, but I had never witnessed this kind of pure unbridled indoctrination when I was in school. I mean, it was starting up, I'm sure, but it wasn't like this. This is beyond egregious, is it not? I have no problem with people learning about Islam. Oh, trust me, I sure as hell, particularly if it's an earnest interest. No, no, I encourage that shit. But hey, this is all really unsurprising that they engage in this obvious bias and goal-driven ideological brainwashing, isn't it? Yeah? It's no, no real revelations going on. So let's get into some of the juicier meats then, shall we? Take a look at this, friends. This professor thought it would be like super duper cool, a really cool idea to have his 18-year-old freshman come on to poll for a chance politically incorrect board for the purpose of disturbing and disrupting our evil white nationalist discussions. Friends, do you realize how utterly absurd that is? Not only are political pseudoscience adjuncts like this guy now convinced that poll is incredibly important to modern politics. Actually, I mean, Considering Trump and then the Macron leaks, perhaps it is, hmm. But this dude actually believes that sending his innocent teenage students to shill their barely memorized Marxist ideology onto our board of peace will totally topple the evil racist alt-right, right? Except here's the problem. Your teenage students are not quite as indoctrinated as you, sir, who I will never call a colleague in the institution of academe, which despite all of my condemnation of, I still respect at its core as an idea. It's too bad you've raped it to death. But what you do by introducing teenagers to politically incorrect, even if your purpose is 
specifically to destroy and stifle free speech is to introduce them, hysterically, for the first time to actual, unfettered free speech. Ah, the... Progressive left. What you are doing is introducing young people to a massive overdose of hard red pills, you idiot! <laughs> okay, you understand. You are purposefully telling your students to go to a website and shitpost. A website in which constant statistical data and news articles that combat every single one of your ideological narratives are posted without cessation 24 hours a day from every internet capable country on the planet and your intention is to get us to shut up and to what convince your students that you're the right one that you're the one that's correct <laughs> again yes all in the name of free speech get us to shut the fuck up i'm sure that's your logic i'm sure that's your narrative fuckos like this guy and steve shives but there is one particular passage that i want to share with you ulrich bear says quote, the idea of freedom of speech does not mean a blanket permission to say anything anybody thinks. It means balancing the inherent value of a given view with the obligation to ensure that other members of a given community can participate in discourse as fully recognized members of that community. Free speech protections, not only but especially in universities, which aim to educate students in how to belong to various communities, should not mean that someone's humanity or their right to participate in political speech as political agents can be freely attacked, demeaned, or questioned. Truly do believe. I, I would like to think that they're being disingenuous, but no, I think they actually believe it. They truly believe that the way free speech works is by ensuring that free speech only works for them, and by assuring that all who disagree are shut down. Yeah, that's how it works. Odin, please bless me with your wisdom. This is breaking my brain. All right. Listen, I'll fill you in. Here's what's gonna happen, friendo. My fellow so-called academic. When you send your vulnerable teenagers on a politically corrupt raiding mission to the epicenter of the right wing, your students are gonna end up taking the red pill. The problem for you, professor, is that your students, their minds are just as malleable to our facts as they are to your baseless bullshit. You will end up converting your own student population into disagreeing with you, interestingly enough, by introducing them for the first time in their liberally educated lives to alternative and conservative ideas, to anything that is not not sickeningly progressive. You and your ilk have systematically and thoroughly over the last 40 years so deeply infiltrated both higher education and the education of children in general that these kids who fully believe in the ideas of progressiveness, love, tolerance, and peace without having any real clue that what you have paraded around as progressive intellectual thought is based more on your political ideology than is the reality of the world we live in, yeah, they have never been exposed to actual reality outside of your carefully constructed narrative framing. That's why it's called taking the red pill, idiot, because it means abandoning the comfortable and pleasant falsehoods of the facade being played out in front of you in favor of being able to see the world for what it really is. And I'm sure idiots like the professor here has probably convinced himself somewhere in his warped lefty mind that what he's doing by sending his underclassmen, or are we still allowed to say underclassmen? Or is it uh, underclass people? Wait, but that would erase the struggles of lower class people in our patriarchal society. Oh, fuck this. I can't get caught in your bullshit. My point is this. He probably thinks what he's doing by having his students do this as a lesson or whatever he's trying to do. It's his own version of a red pill by sending these innocents into the lion's den to see just how awful and prolific neo-Nazism is in the world. But that's a fundamentally flawed premise for a number of reasons. So let me just explain why sending lefties and particularly politically illiterate undergraduates to poll politically incorrect for the purpose of subverting or protesting or whatever it is the fuck you think you're doing here to, you know, destroy the evil alt-right is incalculably retarded. Okay, first of all, every single one of these ding-dongs I've ever seen try to understand 4chan over the last decade and a half, both on the left and the right, thinks of 4chan as a sort of social media forum like Facebook or Twitter with some sort of cohesion and hierarchy, when the reality is that <laughs> no one likes to subvert conversations on 4chan more than 4chan posters. 4chan, by nature of its inherently de-individuated format that forces anonymity and subsequently an abandonment of social norms, the seminal research on that is Zimbardo 1969, 
results in both toxic and benign disinhibition in human behavior and communication. Toxic disinhibition can entail things like trolling and harassment, but benign disinhibition can entail things like the strangers on a train effect, that as a result of our lack of identifiable features, we feel more comfortable sharing the depths of our personal beliefs, cutting deep into the core of the onion that we call being an ogre, I mean being a human. This is a pretty basic theory of social science. We always use the onion example, Sh Shrek has been a boon to social science. <laughs> This theory, though, it's called social penetration theory, in that our political beliefs, for example, our moral values, these types of really deep things, they lie at the core of our personality, the core that we keep hidden in polite society that generally delves a little deeper into the human psyche than, did you catch the game last night? That means that in an anonymous or pseudonymous environment, without the fear of social exclusion, we can cut right into the core of our personal beliefs and reveal them openly without hesitation. Typically, it takes a very long time of getting to know someone, to know you can truly trust them before you start to slice deep into the core of your personality, to pour out your true feelings, hopes, fears, values, and morals. Not in computer-mediated communication. No, not in CMC. That's computer-mediated communication. Walther 1997, his hyperpersonal model suggests that certainly, and in an anonymous environment, you're kind of compounding it. Essentially, an anonymous, computer-mediated digital environment is the perfect storm of social psychological effects that mean the truest nature of humanity is not just cut into, but put on a direct and open hap. That means the worst in people and the best in people are both unleashed when the curtain of the social social contract falls away. As such, what you get is chaos. Deindividuation, anonymity, means inherently the sequestering of social norms to the will of the anonymous collective. Why do you think Pole worships Kek, the ancient Egyptian god who is an embodiment of chaos, the deepest umbra of the darkest time before the dawn? You idiot. You cannot subvert those who constantly disrupt themselves. The phrase pissing in an ocean of piss has always applied to 4chan, and throwing your undergrads into the sea to yell at us mean evil white nationalists to totally stop us from being racist is just another drop in the bucket, you dingus. When Tumblr used to try to occasionally raid 4chan, the most that happened is they got drowned, and then they got triggered, according to their own accounts, literally to death by their own attempt at disrupting the chaos. You cannot subvert chaos, idiot, and your utter ignorance at the basic social science principles I have brought up, very basic ones, coming from someone who I'm sure considers himself a social scientist, is nothing short of extremely embarrassing for you. Secondly, as I mentioned earlier, all this will do is ultimately end up educating a couple of your young students who have never been faced with alternative viewpoints beyond the politically correct and accepted narratives fed to them since childhood, the very views that you sent them into the storm to regurgitate into the wind. <laughs> Funny thing, when you vomit into the wind, it tends to fly back in your face. The thing is, Doc, some of your students might just find that being able to say whatever the fuck they want for once is actually quite nice. Hey, maybe there is something to this free speech thing after all. I mean, you are talking about kids who at this point have been taught now to respect the pronouns of non-binary Apache helicopters being sent to a pit where the word faggot is posted 50 times a minute. More importantly, despite being utter chaos, by virtue of the de-individuated environment and lack of any priority given to any opinion, which is allowed for by the format of 4chan. Every single person can spew whatever shit they think equally. That means, yes, there's often a lot of terrible content, but it also means, in the face of the current chokehold on what is truth and reality by the legacy media and these Marxist academics, poll politically incorrect is probably the most open and free and ultimately intellectually stimulating venue for political discourse in the world. It is not that I am saying sending your students to poll will indoctrinate them. Actually, far from it. I think it's fucking retarded from your perspective because you're letting them loose in the wilds where anyone can express any idea, back it up with evidence and arguments that are not approved by your political ideology that you have worked very hard, you and your colleagues, to make sure they would never be exposed to. I see a lot of people who don't quite understand 4chan claiming that poll is an echo chamber, when that could not be further from the truth. Because of the social science principles I have explicated, and because of the posting format where no post is given priority over another, as you have in other media outlets such as Reddit or Twitter, every single post, every idea, every conversation is swimming in this maelstrom at the same time, and it is up to a discerning reader and poster to process that information for themselves on the other side of the screen. You are letting the people think for themselves. 
and you're not supposed to do that in your ideology. You have to control their thought. There is truly no other place in the world that is less of an echo chamber, particularly not online, than poll. And if I'm being totally honest, that's completely true. Sure, you're gonna get called a faggot if you come in spewing Marxist rhetoric, but you're allowed to spew it. You're allowed to spew it all day, and no one can stop you. For all the shit posting and memes, astonishingly, poll is truly the last bastion of true, unfettered free speech. And before you think this call to action from that cuck is an isolated incident, let me direct you to this brilliant work of art posted on the medium from another professor and self-proclaimed academic, calling for leftists beyond just students to raid and infiltrate these so-called alt-right websites, particularly Poll, which the author erroneously describes as a subreddit first and a 4chan board second, being somehow incapable <laughs> of distinguishing the difference despite publishing a several thousand word essay on the topic. <laughs> Look, this video is going to be long as fuck. I could make, friends, an entire video on this article alone, and originally I was considering probably just doing that, but the subject matter was just so succinct with the topic that I felt it would be more logical to combine them. This is why I don't do a ton of videos. I get too long and f whatever. So here we have Professor Seth Abramson, oy vey, calling for liberals and leftists to invade alt-right spaces for the purpose of disrupting our conversations and ultimately destroying the evil right-wing memes going where we plan our super secret Nazi takeover of the nation. He even suggests that if lefties are capable of controlling themselves enough to not get constantly triggered by bad naughty words, they could get addicted to totally like decimating us with their logic and facts. I mean, it's so easy, right? since we're the ones who are so easily offended and politically ignorant. In this article, which is an extremely long, droll exercise of touting his own intellectual superiority through unnecessarily complex vernacular and intentional use of jargon, which by the way, professor, I know you had to take at least one course in undergraduate pedagogy if you are a professor and you're told not to do that, not use that jargon, to establish a sense of false intelligence and using pretentious tautology presented as pedagogical honesty. Oh, and Seth, yeah, as a fellow academic, I can for real go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a limp-wristed cuckboy like you. You want to talk highfalutin like an asshole. But the point is, the majority of this article is nothing but paramasturatory auto fellatio for Seth's ego via the use of semi-academic terminology, semantics, and verbiage, while actually amounting intellectually to a hill of fucking beans. What Seth intends by this article Article, beyond sucking his own mental cock, is to supposedly educate normie liberals on how to troll the alt-right, all while he fails to even define the most basic terms with competency. For example, he describes the term snowflake as an insult to frail masculinity rather than as an insult to Tumblrite social justice warriors who think there are 7,000 genders. He also completely fails to understand who is involved in the so-called alt-right, assigning the majority of the blame to lonely, angry virgin nerds who are being seduced. Actually, astoundingly, by what he considers to be a minority, not a majority, of real white nationalists, while simultaneously suggesting that there is no difference between sexist or racist jokes and actual racism or sexism hysterically only when it's those on the wrong side of history who engage in that type of communication. Let me be clear. Yes, friends, here's what he's saying. He is actively advocating and encouraging in this article for leftists to infiltrate 4chan and use what he describes as our hateful, sexist, racist, bigoted vernacular in order to fit in, yet his side is cleansed inherently of all guilt in this behavior for they are the enlightened ones. Do you understand the absurdity there? He even admits he thinks not all posters are intrinsically racist, but they are all intrinsically guilty for using evil racist slurs, and they will be radicalized in his opinion if they continue to use this media outlet. Yet, simultaneously, he is encouraging his leftist audience to use the exact same slurs as a method of supposed infiltration. Yeah, like 4chan's fucking Majestic 12, without any concerns on his part that the use of that language and verbiage has any meaning of racism or sexism, as long as it's coming from the left. So you can say faggot all you want, and you're just, you know, you're absolved of all your sins. Cool. Jesus fucking Christ, what a complete and utter moron you are, Seth. This article is thousands of words of complete and utter misinformation and misunderstanding on par of your grandmother trying to understand the rap music. I hate that I keep having to not disagree with Poe Joseph that conservatism is the new counterculture. Fuck me. Anyway, Seth occasionally makes a few accidentally very hilarious claims in this piece, by the way, by nature of his complete and utter lack of knowledge on the subject that he is actually role-playing at being an expert on, such as that the alt-right, basically in his own words, are the most diverse group of neo-Nazis on the planet. <laughs> we make that joke too, friend. 
But generally speaking, this manual, as he described it himself, is designed to help lefties put us terrible right-wingers in our place. And how should they do that? Beyond just coming into our right-wing hate websites, such as reddit.com slash pull. <laughs> I don't even understand how Reddit works, sorry guys. And uh, using racial slurs to show that they're one of us, one of us, one of us. Seth, tell me please, what is your prescriptive for the liberal masses you are encouraging through your enlightened academic scholarship to disrupt the evil alt-right hacker known as 4chan? Oh, it's this. Uh, don't allow yourself to get triggered. <laughs> Among all of this insipid brain damage writing he includes here is supposedly helpful information. Seth believes that the only goal of the alt-right is to trigger, i.e. make upset, those who don't agree with them. I mean, can you imagine living in this guy's head where he thinks that an entire political movement, namely the entirety of the new right or modern right-wing conservatism, is designed for the express purpose of making him cry by calling him a dirty kike on the internet? I certainly can't, but he apparently can. Yes, he thinks everyone who dis agrees with him, is doing so only to hurt his precious little feelings. And like a good little feminist cuck, he thinks he can take back his self-efficacy by pretending to not be triggered, by going into our den of hate speech and telling us how stupid we are, all while thinking this is somehow destroying us. Woo! <laughs> Here's an astounding thing, guys. With pretty little questioning on my part, having gotten very accustomed to being able to read one's writing style, particularly in a de-individuated environment, because most boards on 4chan have and always have never had any type of poster identification, I can say with some certainty that Seth himself posted this article multiple times on poll the day it was written for the purpose of gaining publicity and then continually responded to the threads he made with the identical pretentious writing style that was, as I said, overtly identifiable to the discerning browser for the purpose of defending his shitty article. As if he was, like, sharing a gotcha moment to leave us shaking in our Third Reich jackboots. My point is... My point in bringing up this turn of a publication, and yeah, this is probably gonna be, like, the longest video I've ever made. <laughs> My point in bringing this up at all is because this is the exact same mentality as that professor calling for his students to raid 4chan. Equally absurd in its premise, its goal, and its methodology. These two so-called academics, so heavily steeped and indoctrinated in cultural Marxist theory that they not only believe they're the ones on the right side of history without, you know, bothering to conduct even a cursory investigation on the subjects they believe themselves to be experts on, but academics who truly, I think, believe in the same poultry information that they continue to indoctrinate and educate the masses in, just as they themselves were indoctrinated in, when in reality, they must face the fact that their worldview is slowly dying. The academy is dying, colleagues. They are no longer the unbridled masters of all thought. They are actually being challenged. Their views are being questioned as people educate themselves without the need for your intellectual audio fellatio. As such, is it any wonder that these Marxist professors are losing their damn minds over the very concept that the ideas that they were spoon-fed and never raised an eyebrow at, and they fully intend to continue to spoon-feed to as many people as possible, are actually being questioned? It really isn't. It's not surprising at all. They recognize the loss of control, and it is so beyond their capacity to actively cope with, being that they've never had to cope with any actual opposition from the comfort of their leather armchairs in the ivory tower, that they resort to lashing out like a damn chimp in one of the most unproductive ways possible, which is to send their young initiates into the lion's den where red pills are handed out like candy. So actually, professors, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, it helps. Keep sending your students here, shooting yourself in the foot. Maybe if you keep it up, the next generation can start to undo the mess that your ilk have created the academy for the last half a century. We won't have any more fucking courses on abolishing an entire race. And move the orientation of the academy back to science and facts and questioning, away from feels and politically correct narrative-driven propaganda. Because that's not where it should be. Right now, the academy, as I've said, it's dying. It's, it's on its deathbed. I do believe in academia. I think that at one point it did mean something, but you have destroyed it. And I sincerely hope you keep doing this. Like I said, yeah, keep sending us our way. Keep introducing them to the idea of free speech. And you probably won't be in control for much longer. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Aiden Paladin, all ton of olds.